Hello. First tonight, the father and daughter found dying at their family home in Essex. We know that 48-year-old Costas Paredes died of stab wounds in the house. We know that 16-year-old Margaret also died of stab wounds after being airlifted to hospital. What we don't know is who killed whom. Gareth George is outside the family home in Sybil Headingham now. Well, two community support officers still on duty here in Sybil Headingham. And this is all we really know at this stage, that police were called here on Saturday and they found Costas Paredes and his daughter, Margaret, both fatally injured. And now what was a family home is at the centre of a murder investigation. Costas Paredes and his daughter, Margaret, just over a week ago on a family holiday. A seemingly happy snapshot. Now the sad reminder of a double tragedy. This morning, three of Margaret's friends visited the family house to lay more flowers. They seemed overcome when they saw the other tributes. But newspaper reports Margaret was troubled have angered them. She was very close with her family and her dad especially. They had a brilliant relationship. And everything that people have said, all rumours that are going around, nasty things, are all completely untrue. She was amazing. And everyone is so missing her so much. Tributes too on the social networking website Facebook. Margaret's last message was posted on Saturday morning. It read, what a special girl I am. Well, Dad says so anyway. Essex police are saying nothing, apart from they're not looking for anyone else. So to say the sequence of events that led to the deaths is unclear is an understatement. The results of post-mortem examinations were released today, confirming that both father and daughter died from stab wounds. Margaret Paredes was on a beauty course at Braintree College. She'd just left Headingham School. Uh, she was a lively uh, young person. She was outgoing. She, she was a friendly, uh, friendly student, and uh, she was well-liked by students and staff. Thea Trotman laid some flowers too. She described Margaret Paredes as her best friend. Just the most bubbly, wonderful, kind, loving girl in the world. Whenever she walked into the room, the whole atmosphere would lighten up. Not a bad word to say about her. Police were at the house all day today, but exactly why a father and daughter died just a week after this photograph of them was taken may never be known. Well, this is a bizarre and baffling tragedy, and if the police do have more information about what happened here, they're not revealing it yet. And how significant could Margaret's final Facebook update be? What a special girl I am. Well, my dad says so anyway. Posted perhaps little more than an hour before whatever led to this tragedy began here. And we're expecting inquests uh, to open tomorrow morning. Gareth, thank you. Within the last hour, 300 Connaught staff in Norwich have been told they've lost their jobs. It comes on another grim day for council workers across the region, with hundreds of jobs under threat in Luton too. In a moment, our political correspondent Andrew Sinclair with two councils looking for a partial merger. But first, Clive Lewis on the latest in Norwich. Well, Susie, it's been a pretty distraughtful day for many workers at Connaught here in Norwich. At a meeting earlier this afternoon, uh, they were told by the administrators KPMG that of the 500 staff employed by the company, 300 from the building services departments would lose their jobs as of today. Now, those are bricklayers, plumbers, carpenters, basically the people who maintain Norwich City Council's 17,000 council homes. Now, TV cameras weren't allowed into that meeting, but one of the uh, employees of Connaught, who's now been made redundant, took his mobile phone in and filmed the moment that they were told the news. We are all gutted. The contract, we understand, is temporary to levels. Um, we are all so, well, we've got to string them up, you know, unbelievable. A lot of people have been there many, many years. Um, I've been there 23. 40 bleeding years, some of us, nothing. Well, they got us all together and there was a little bit of kind of like shuffling about because no one could hear, but then he just come out and basically told us straight away that the people, that, I mean, the administrators have got to pay us the, the last four or five days' wages and, and then the rest has got to come yeah. off the government um, and you've all lost your yeah. jobs, you've all been made redundant. Well, quite, well, I'm quite sick about it, really. I've been here, as I said, I've been here 20 years. And um, I was hoping to be here for another 10, to be true, until I retired. But obviously not. Not shocked, but very disappointed with the way that we've been treated. Always knew something uh, 
something's not quite right from the word go that corner took over. But I never realised that would come to this. Now, one glimmer of good news today. We're told the remaining 200 Connaught staff from the Waste Services Department have been told their jobs are safe. As for those who've been made redundant, we're told that they will be holding a demonstration outside Connaught tomorrow afternoon. Clive, thank you very much indeed. So that's Norwich. It's becoming increasingly clear that council jobs are under threat across the region. In Suffolk, two local authorities are thinking of a partial merger. They're meeting tonight in the village of Weniston. Our political correspondent, Andrew Sinclair, is there. Yes, and uh, a little bit of history will be made in a short while time, uh, Stuart, when for the first time ever in our region, two councils will hold a joint council meeting while they discuss plans to merge their management structures. We'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. But first, it's not just Connaught where there's been bad news on the jobs front today. Luton Borough Council warned today that it is planning job cuts. It says as many as 500 jobs could be under threat. The authority needs to save £20 million by next March. It says some of those jobs will be outsourced but it says there will be compulsory redundancies there's going to be an awful lot more that's going to hit Luton we can try and manage it as best we possibly can but really you know, my appeal goes to the government and to say please look at who you're hitting don't do it as hard don't do it as fast realize that we're not all in this together the way things are going it's going to be the poorest that are going to suffer the hardest and as we've said before, every council in our region is looking at its books very closely at the moment. Today, Norfolk County Council, the Cabinet of Norfolk County Council met today to start working on plans to find savings for next year. This just a month, after, a week after they announced plans to cut £10 million from this year's budget. The council is facing a shortfall of £155 million. Well, we're in Weniston tonight, which is very close to the border between Suffolk County Council and Waveney, I'm sorry, Suffolk Coastal Council rather, and Waveney District Council. And the reason we're here is that tonight for the first time, both cabinets are going to meet together and hold a joint meeting. Uh, the council has already shared a chief executive, he's with me now, um, Stephen Baker. Um, sharing management structures, does that save you money? Absolutely, it'll save us about £400,000 a year. And in terms of jobs? In terms of jobs, we've managed the uh, vacancy situation, so there won't be any compulsory redundancies as a result of this but uh, it will mean a, sh a smaller, slimmed-down management structure to serve both individual councils. A lot of councils in Suffolk are thinking of sharing services. You've never gone this far. Um, is it, can you see other councils following suit? I don't see any reason why not. Um, I think we can make it work. We wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't going to work. And, as you say, shared service is the first step. We're going that extra step to make those extra efficiencies. OK, Stephen Baker, thank you very much thank indeed. You. Meeting starts in a short while time. Andrew, thank you very much. Coming up later in the programme, the event described as a cross between a village fete and the V Festival.